As the hours drew onward, Garrett remained restless. He wasn't accustomed to sleeping in the evenings anymore. The night was his, to plunder his riches, and race along the rooftops. It had always been so, for as long as the aging thief could remember. A young boy sat hunched over against a cold city wall. He was no stranger to suffering. Hunger, fear, and discomfort were all he had ever known. His body shivered as he felt the icy rain pelt through his ragged clothing, igniting a fire within his fresh wounds. The boy clenched his shoulder in agony, grinding his teeth. The sudden pressure caused the injury to reopen slightly, prompting him to moan as a fresh stream of dark crimson erupted from his palm. The youth cursed. Why did they have to be so harsh with him? Couldn't they see that he was dying of starvation? Didn't they even care that a child's blood could have been on their hands, had the boy failed in evading their brutal onslaught? A rare smile graced his lips, although it was far from contented. No, I'm alone. His thoughts were torn from him as his empty stomach began to protest again. The deep and cramping pains nearly caused the boy to recoil into a ball of misery. Only the slash to his shoulder and upper back kept him upright. Those injuries hurt far worse, and the youth did not wish to aggravate them by shifting his position. Through hazy, hungry brown eyes, the boy watched the procession before him. It seemed that the entire village was bustling that day. A dead city ironically full of life. Suddenly, a dark figure caught his eye. A tall, intimidating man was making his way through the chaos, seemingly avoided by all. The boy scrambled to his feet as he noticed the hooded figure coming his way. Perhaps, with as much guile and determination as he could muster in his weakened state, the young pickpocket trailed the stranger as he entered a dark alleyway and prepared to make his move. Just when he was within mere inches of what he could clearly identify as a bulging coin purse, the boy reached out. But instead of a copious sack of gold, rough leather found his hand. The man's gloved fingers tightened around the boy, and the terrified child fought desperately to retract his extremity. But it was now firmly within his quarry's grasp. With a mouthful of cold terror, he looked up, and met the eyes of his captor. The man's own optics were firm and frightening, yet also strangely inquisitive. His lips parted, and one simple sentence flowed forth, That's not for you. Struggling even harder to free himself, the lad cried out, Please, sir. He begged, Please, sir. Child. It takes great skill to sneak up on a keeper, especially one who does not wish to be seen. The man continued, an impressed smile replacing his strict expression. What is your name? For a second, the boy stopped struggling. He gulped down his tension and readied himself for whatever was to transpire. He was on his own now. He had to be brave. With a final breath of forced courage, he uttered one word. Garrett. Garrett! Garrett, wake up! The thief's dream faded from consciousness as the harsh light of morning found him. His eye focused, and the smiling face of Guinevere came into view. The young woman nearly gasped when she noticed the gaping, lifeless hollow staring back at her. From where his right eye should have been? That icy blue eye. It was false. Garrett noticed her stares, and abruptly turned away. He wasn't used to anyone seeing him without his eye. Not to mention the fact that he was practically nude underneath the thin sheet. Rolling over on his mattress, the agitated thief clutched the sheets tighter around his body, and muttered under his breath. Garrett, I... I brought you breakfast. 
She offered, sensing his embarrassment. I sleep during the day, alright. Take your charity elsewhere. But, but I stole it. She coaxed, once again trying to befriend her new mentor. Using your invisibility again, no doubt. Good thief strikes at night, kid. Guinevere was growing used to his harsh treatment of her by now, and she wasn't about to take no for an answer. It was about more than survival now. It was an odyssey of interest. Garrett had fascinated her practically since she had met up with him, and Guinevere wanted to know more about him. She decided to try a different approach. Crossing her arms in defiance, the young woman scoffed. Well that's funny. The other night you told me that a good thief should remain undetected at all times. Her unexpected quip caught Garrett's ears. It was the truth, although he didn't like admitting it to himself. Reaching over to the lockbox he kept beside his mattress, Garrett opened the metal lid with a creak, and produced his mechanic lie. He polished the object between the folds of his sheets lovingly, and popped it into the barren socket. Alright. He groaned as he forced himself to a sit. What did you steal? Bread? <laughs> Very original. Listen, do you want some or not? Guinevere snapped. Garrett blinked. Who was this girl? She could go from meek and innocent, to brash and bold within moments. Simmons or not, there was certainly a story there. I'll take a slice, but then I'm going right back to sleep. I suggest you do the same. We've got a busy night of training ahead of us. Really? Guinevere inquired with excitement, producing the stolen loaf. She pointed her index finger out, and a beam of light green energy sprung from her long nail. The beam made contact with the bread, slicing effortlessly through it. Garrett watched her with a bemused expression. Ever hear of using a knife? I don't have one. She replied, her sweet voice laced with naivety. Garrett scoffed, shaking his head as she passed him the slice. It was still warm from her spell. Never mind. As they sat and ate in silence, Guinevere once again surveyed her surroundings. The clock tower was even more dismal during the day. At least in the darkness of night, the young woman hadn't been able to see the dead rats and ravens scattered amidst the corners. Clouds of dust danced in the sunbeams like a fine pollen, and the beams of the vaulted ceiling were decorated in intricate cobwebs. I, uh, suppose you don't believe in cleaning, huh? <laughs> she joked. Garrett shot her a knowing glare. Guinevere finished her breakfast and looked down at her velvety blue pumps. It had begun to occur to her that she was dressed nothing like the people she had met since coming here. Both Barso and Garrett dressed in considerably darker materials than she, and with little to no attention to fashion or flair. An innocent Guinevere wondered why this was. So, you said that I had training tonight? What am I gonna be doing? Nothing much. Basso wants me to meet a recent contact of his, and I want you to accompany me. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not much of a people person. If I have to suffer through a meeting with one of his mates, then so do you. Besides, I'm apparently not supposed to leave you alone anymore. The thief grumbled. I love meeting new people! Guinevere blurted. Garrett just stared at her again. Mm. I mean... This little trick would be great for your training. You desperately need to work on your stealth. So tonight, I want you to try and keep up with me. Without using your invisibility. Or any other magic for that matter. Guinevere gulped down tension. She wasn't sure that she was up to that. But for her teacher's sake. Nay, for her own sake. She had to try. I'll give it my best, Garrett. Do you know what might help? The thief offered. No? What? Guinevere grew jovial upon hearing what she perceived, 
as upcoming friendly advice. Dressing like an actual thief, instead of a bloody whore. He replied, matter-of-factly. Guinevere's eyes flew open and she violently backed away. She wasn't offended by the comment, but rather shocked. She hadn't been exposed to much, as far as the lower classes were concerned. She had no idea what her showy outfit had been suggesting about her. I... I thought this was how the beautiful women of your class dressed. She explained. Garrett raised an eyebrow. My... class? Well, yes. I mean, sure. I have seen women dressed in other outfits as well. She recalled the dark brown pauper dresses that most of the women in the city wore. But Guinevere had always hated the drab, ugly colors of their frocks. But when I ran away, I wanted to look my best. My father used to take me into the city. To a place called... Blossom... something? The House of Blossoms? Garrett corrected. He wasn't entirely sure if he was comfortable with where this conversation was going. Yes, that's the place. The young woman smiled gaily. I, I was small, so I don't remember much about it. Father would always leave me in the care of some of the beautiful women there and go off with... Sandra, I think her name was. He allowed prostitutes to watch over you while he worked. Garrett remarked. He had been right. He wasn't comfortable with this conversation. He looked over the young Simmons before him. If her own father had treated her with such careless neglect, it would make a bit more sense as to why she would want to run away. Oh no! Hazel and Elizabeth weren't... Garrett waited for her innocent mind to play catch up, and eventually, Guinevere flushed a brilliant red at the realization. But... They were always so nice to me. They would let me wear their makeup and dress up in their clothes. It wasn't so bad. Although their perfume always used to make me sneeze. Guinevere reminisced, feeling both embarrassed and ashamed. I suppose that's why I chose to dress like them when I try to disguise myself as a commoner. I always thought they were so pretty. Apparently, so did your old man. Garrett scoffed dryly. Guinevere shot him a nasty glare. You could have told me sooner. How I looked, I mean. I only mentioned it, because I don't want you giving away your position out there. Garrett stretched. Basso would kill me if the watch happened to spot you. After all, I'm apparently your keeper now. A sudden jolt gripped his chest at the unexpected words that had just left his lips. Her keeper? Keeper. Garrett had always thought bad puns to be Basso's thing, not his. Noticing Guinevere's odd expression, the thief stretched out atop his mattress. Since you're so wakeful, make yourself useful and go check inside that chest over there. He pointed lazily. Okay, what's in it? Something to keep you from getting us both caught.